Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly mod collection demo shop update. We had a couple of errors in the first few minutes, but everything got sorted out pretty quickly, and they had some cool ones this week. And let's kick things off with this really strange ES345 Custom. So we had just reviewed a 345 a couple of days ago, and it looked like this. But the one that they're offering today looks like... This. Okay. Bright orange sparkle finish. You've got a Bigsby B7 on it. The bridge looks obnoxiously high. However, looking at a regular one, it looks like they normally line up just above the wider part of the F hole. So the spacing's the same, it's just it looks strange because of the Bigsby. And the fact that we only have a middle pickup here rather than a neck pickup and a bridge pickup. So we're kind of getting Tom DeLong vibes here because they're using a tenon cover instead of putting a neck pickup. But the fact that they have that there means this likely came to the demo shop without being routed for anything yet, pickup-wise. It's either that or they filled in the holes and then routed it for the middle pickup and did the refinish, but that seems like a lot of work. And witness lines would eventually show. But you've got your three-ply binding. It looks like we have one different colored knob, to which you might say, why do we still need four knobs if you only got one pickup? Yep, that's what I was thinking. A piezo bridge, okay. So you can get some acoustic sounds as well as electric, and you've got independent volumes and controls for each. The back is also orange crush flavored, and a matching headstock with a see-through truss rod cover. That's interesting. It was offered at 6100 which is a lot of money. Because looking back here, this is not a custom shop 345, this is just regular USA production. So that was quite a premium. And the 3X5 custom colors always tend to take a little bit longer to sell, so it's available if you're interested. But this was really cool. Lizard Snap Explorer Custom. Had I not just purchased an Explorer Custom for review and demo, I would have been tempted to pick this up because I love the fact that it's a dark green burst with a nice black border, and then they painted the pick guard to match everything else. And it looks like we got the black chrome hardware. This has a vibe. But if you zoom in onto the neck, it almost looks like we got a little bit of red in this as well. So when you move on to the headstock, okay. On launch day, I only saw the red logo. I didn't realize they also had a scaly texture up here and a custom truss rod cover. Man, I really did sleep on this one. You've got that texture slash unique finish on the back of the neck, and it looks like on the body as well. It kind of reminds me of Ovation guitars, the back of them, how they're like a plastic material. Yes, that was certainly an interesting one. Kind of makes me sad about the one I ended up purchasing, but hey, it'll be a festive episode that you'll see this upcoming week. But it was this one that was blinding me that made me not worry about anything else. Lilac Sparkle Les Paul Custom. Purple Les Pauls used to be pretty rare. They're starting to make more and more of these, but there's always been a pretty high demand. So this is extra ultra sparkly. Gold hardware blinging it out. No matching headstock this time, but it was a complete refinish. Top, back, and sides looking pretty good. And all things considered, I thought $52.99 wasn't too bad of a price for this. But if you like that last reptile explorer, how about this standard reissue in Lime Lizard Wizard? Even though I like green finishes, this one didn't quite do it for me. It kind of reminds me of the gecko burst, but you've got like a triple burst going on with the dark green, light green, and then that lemon lime center. And then they match that on the headstock as well, and it looks like they gave it a Gibson decal, which that was a lot of overwhelming color on the top. So the back, they left it in the natural cherry and gave it a moto backplate just for good measure. But since they just called this a standard reissue, they didn't really tell us what model it started life as, so it's kind of hard to say, was it worth it or not? Because this could have been an R7 or an R8, which would actually be a pretty good deal. But if this was an R9 or an RO, this would be a steal of a deal for the custom color. But if that one was a little bit too crazy and expensive for you, how about this tribute in Adonis Lavender Special? 1600 bucks, but again, a nice purple lavender. As far as these custom color tributes go, it's one of the nicer ones we've seen. Nice angelic vibes with a matching headstock and a purple old-timey Gibson logo. <laughs> Something about that feels wrong. But it was a complete refinish, and they upgraded you to a hard shell case. Not a bad price. I like the name of this one, Copper Begonia Satin. The chrome hardware really complements that finish, and the white inlays stick out, and the rosewood of the fretboard kind of blends in with the theme they're going for here. But this is one of those models I feel could have used a stinger. This 335 had ebony space sparkle finish. They weren't really asking much of a premium, but the stock photos don't do it much justice. I really can't even see the sparkles. So maybe when it sells, somebody will send me some photos. But here was an Oxblood Satin Flying V. Looks interesting with the voodoo knobs and the golden pick guard. Got the continuation of the voodoo pickups being thrown in here as well. But it appears to have been a complete refin. And for good measure, they gave you a government series Flying V case. The standard 50s was oddly called Baked Pomegranate. Do people actually bake those things? I, I've never done that before. I just eat them. It's a nice Merlot-like color finish. 
with clear backplates, but kind of an interesting line pattern right here. It's like the stain didn't penetrate all the wood grain on the edges. And I just completely passed over this one because it said Les Paul Standard 60s gold top. Okay, it's not that special. It's about the same price, but then it says finish with blue back. Okay, <laughs> it's got a blue back. That's cool. They should have just led with that photo. That is unique. I like that. To be fair, as a limited edition, not a huge mass run. But they also gave it gold hardware to make it a little bit extra special. What looks like a sparkle blue headstock and a custom shop case. Man, I was sleeping on that one. I would have documented that guitar because that was cool. And then we had the studio. Again, we've got the multicolor pickups going on, but I'm not sure, was this an attempted relic job? Because, I mean, that's where your arm rests against the guitar. Sometimes you pick a little bit heavily in that area, or they were just trying to make it unique. Like, that's a really flat black. But they didn't do anything like that on the back. But we did get a matching red logo. There's another custom color Thunderbird bass, if you call making it satin custom color. A couple of cool custom color explorers. Mustard Banana Metallic. Something about that name just doesn't seem all that appealing to me. And something about that pick guard doesn't seem right, like it's way too close to the edge. But the other one's Beach Activity Green. I like this one. Nice pastel colors, perloid pick guard, and that matches really well with the binding. It's pretty cool. Both of them had matching finishes on the back as well. Then we had a Thunderbird base, which not much has changed. So I went down to the description and somebody's definitely agreeing with me, but trying to market it. <laughs> the modifications consist of a fancy white perloid pickguard with stamp. But now let's kick it on to the demo shop. So it's not like last week when they dumped a whole bunch of guitars on us and then chopped the prices by 10 to 30% and they all sold out within days. No, my friends, this week was a, a little bit less crazy. But there was this 339 figured, which you can check out my Joan Jet reviews if you're interested in learning more about these. But I thought the back was particularly nice on this example. And the lefty's got a really cool Pelham Blue SG Custom. You don't see that color on a custom in the two pickup variation and in left-handed very often. And it's got the Grover Imperial Perloy tuner tips. Can't go wrong with that. And then I thought this 60 standard unburst had a very unique top. They also had one of those P90 335s that sold pretty quick. It was priced very fairly. So when these things were first released, uh, that was about a year or so ago, the leading stock photo actually had a Gibson decal on it. And I don't think it had the crown either. And that made me upset because it's like, oh man, they, they took that feature away, but gave us the cool P90s. But it ended up being that that was the prototype or something. So now I'm trying to find that guitar because it's different from all the rest. And that's the only one I'll document for this model. I'd asked Mark Agnesi about that and uh, he said he was going to look for it for me, but it's been about a year. I don't think we're going to find that guitar. And then lastly, I thought this was a pretty good deal on a 70s Flying V in the ebony finish, which is a Gibson.com exclusive. But these things are up to like, what, 2,500 bucks brand new. So $1,699 in today's market is stellar. Heading on over to the European side, another beautiful blue 335 dot. I've always liked this blue burst finish on these because they get it on the back of the body as well as on the neck and even the sides and they get the black binding and that's a maple neck. It's just a whole slew of interesting stuff on those. Then we had a 61 SG. This was one of the older ones, I believe from 2016, looking at our serial number here, but man, this era is so strange with their SGs. They had ridiculously wide pointy headstocks. I think they purposefully made them look weird so people <laughs> would pay more money for the custom shops. And then lastly, another one for the lefties, a light burst premium plus standard with a really tight kind of pinstripey top, but it's got a lot of figuring going on with it. It's got the cross hatched wood grain running perpendicular to it. It's almost an 80s looking top in that aspect, but at the same time, the flame pattern isn't quite the same. All right, troglodytes, that's going to do it for this week's recap. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.